welcome to this preaching this is the third part of the first preaching based on Ezekiel 18 let us pray we come before you our dear Heavenly Father we acknowledge your presence your protection and your providence in our lives we have the word before us we are asking that you nourish our minds our hearts and our lives please forgive us our trespasses in christ help us in need to know you better and deeper in christ we pray amen ezekiel 18 1 to 4 and also verse 20. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you people mean by quoting this proverb about the land of Israel? The fathers eat sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set to edge. As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, you will no longer quote this proverb in Israel, for every living soul belongs to me. The Father, as well as the Son, both alike belong to me. The soul who sins is the one who will die. Verse 20, the soul who sins is the one who will die. The son will not share the guilt of the father, nor will the father share the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous man will be credited to him, and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against him the soul who sins is the one who will die ezekiel 18 verse 4 and verse 20 this is the gospel message in the old testament also in the new testament romans 6 verse 23 the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. How to understand this message? The context, the content, and the continuity of God's judgment and God's good news is clear. What is the context? This context will help us to understand the Jewish people's question, which is the fundamental question asked by people of God, asked by all people of all generations. Why evil is evil because we are punished for sins of others are we punished because of past generations fault so the proverb the fathers eat sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge We'll look at the context of this proverb, the misunderstanding of the history, the misunderstanding of the context sometimes lead to such proverbs, which says we are punished because of the sins of our fathers. What is the context? The immediate context. 
which will help us to understand our own context. Sometimes we have COVID-19. We live after apartheid. We live after other generation did wrong. And we partake the consequences of their deed in the past. So now the question is, how should we understand it? How should we live today? So now the context of the Jewish people is that when you look at Hezekiah, the 13th king of Judah, his account is in 2 Kings 18, 19, and 20. You can go also to Chronicles. Looking at Hezekiah, 2 Kings 18, verse 5, Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before him, or after him. He was a good king, Hezekiah. But his father, Ahaz, was indeed a bad king. Now, looking at Hezekiah, his father being an evil king, now his son, Hezekiah's son, Manasseh, the 14th king of Judah. 2 Kings 21, 1 to 18. He was a bad king, evil king. Hezekiah was a good king. His father was bad. Hezekiah's son Manasseh was bad. Manasseh's son Ammon, the 15th king of Judah, was bad. But the grand, the great grandson of Hezekiah, Josiah, the 16th king of Judah, was a righteous king. But he was killed unexpectedly. And it rose a lot of question. A lot of question came. Why Josiah died, the great grandson of Hezekiah. Yes, his grandfather Manasseh was bad. His father Ammon was bad. Josiah was a good, a righteous king. Hezekiah, his great grandfather, was a righteous king. So now it brought a lot of theories, especially. Fueled by Exodus 20, verse 5. Exodus 20, verse 5, which says, God is a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of their father to the third and fourth generation of those who hate him. This is the context to understand the proverb which the Jewish people who were exiled in Babylon formulated and believe in, that they are punished because of the sins of their forefathers. Now, what is the content? What is the message here? What is Ezekiel trying to do in Ezekiel 18. Is this a contradiction to Exodus 20 verse 5? No. Ezekiel is saying people will be found guilty of their own sin. Each and every one will stand before God and will be liable for his or her own sin 
And when one is found guilty, his guilt conscious, that guilt judgment is not held up against his son or anybody else. One's guilt is one's responsibility and accountability. It is not passed on. The question is, what is passed on? The consequences, yes, of my father's sin, it will influence and impact my own context. Indeed, it is true. The influence, the consequence will be there, will be passed on. But the guilt is not passed on. What does it mean? When Exodus 20 verse 5 says, God is a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of their father to the third and fourth generation. Listen, of those who hate God, only those who respond negatively in their own context, whether they were influenced by their forefathers, whether their context is of poverty, whether their context is influenced by the past generation, the question, the main question is, how do you respond to God? How do you account to God? How do you react to God? You are accountable of your own, in your own context. You can't use your context and play a victim mentality. You can't hide behind others and you make a blame shift as if you are not living, as if there is no God now, here and now. Yes, Adam's sin, Eve's sin, influence us, influence this world. It is sinful as it is, but we are responsible before God of our own sin. And that is how we are going to be judged of our own. We are responsible before God. That is the, the content of the message as we read Hezekiah, Ezekiel 18 verse 4. For every living soul belong to me. The Father as well as the Son, both alike belong to me. The soul who sins is the one who will die. Verse 20. The soul who sins is the one who will die. The son will not share the guilt of the father, nor will the father share the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous man will be credited to him, and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against him. The continuity. We have understood them, the context. The content, the message is clear unto us. But now, what is the continuity here? The gospel is available to you and me. It is open to me and you. Yes, in our own context, influenced by others, influenced by the sins of Adam and Eve and our grandfathers, influenced by apartheid. Now we have COVID-19. We have all kind of evil, but we are responsible before God. God wants us to react to his plan to make things right. That is the gospel. But it starts with the bad news. The good news 
Start with the bad news. The bad news being, we are all evil. We are all sinful. We fall short of the glory of God. All of us. We can't make blame shifting. We can't play victim mentality. We are responsible before God. It means we are to make self-introspection, self-examination, and be able to say, I am sober. I submit. I subject my life to him. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8 to 10. Your sorrow, your suffering should lead you to say, God is the one who will make things right. The righteousness of God in Christ is available. It is the gospel that I need. I am sick. I need the doctor. I'm drawn. I need someone to help me. And God is saying, in Christ, I will help you. I will be with you. I will save you. I will wash away your sins. The blood, the precious blood of Christ, indeed, will wash you and save you. First Peter 1, verse 18 and 19. And now, this gospel, the seed of the gospel, give us new birth and a new life in Christ. So we are God's workmanship, so that in Christ, we do good work. We are accountable. And indeed, we grow and bear fruit only in Christ. That is the God's plan to make things right. It is when we admit and say, soberly, we submit and subject ourselves to Christ and his rule by his word and by his spirit. May God bless us.